We've got some breaking news here on the breaking news desk at Bloomberg. I'm Olivia Stearns. We just want to let you know that Enrico Letta, the Prime Minister of Italy, has officially resigned. He has sent a letter to uh, President Napolitano saying that he will resign tomorrow. This comes after Matteo Renzi, who is the president of the biggest uh, political party in Italy, the People's Democratic Party, has been urging Enrico Letta to resign. There essentially has been a power struggle at the top of that party for control over the party ever since Renzi got the job back in December. Enrico Letta himself. He's only been in power as Italy as prime minister for the past 10 months. Um, so at and at Matteo Renzi's urging, he has now officially said he will resign. The interesting thing here is that Italy will not hold new elections for a new prime minister because Matteo Renzi is now the head of the People's Democratic Party. He will take over the uh, position as premier. Of course, it's been a tumultuous time for Italian politics in the past couple of 18 months after Silvio Berlusconi left and there was a, a sort of a, a pause when people didn't know which party would take over. But finally, Enrico Letta filled that power vacuum. He's been in power for 10 months, but now he is resigning at the urging of Matteo Renzi, who is the head of the People's Democratic Party. Matteo Renzi and him uh, did not get along. There was a, a struggle for control of the power, uh, for power, party power, I should say. And we are seeing a little bit of a reaction in the markets. We're seeing Italian bonds, uh, which are at multi-year lows, actually falling, though, amid this power struggle for control. So again, Italian Prime Minister Enrico Letta has now said in an emailed statement that he will resign. He has sent this statement to President Nap Na Napolitano for more uh, on this evolving story. Let's get over to Hans Nichols, who I believe is in the Piazza del Popolo uh, in Italy. Hans? Uh, I'm out of the Piazza del Popolo because it's dark and we thought it wouldn't have that same radiant experience as earlier. It's obviously an exciting day here in Italian politics. I'll just walk you through the last two, three hours. What we saw is Matteo Renzi. He spoke to his party and he thanked uh, he thanked Letta for his experience. That was a clear indication that Letta was going to be on the way out, but we hadn't heard from Letta yet. Now we have heard from Letta. He has told the president that he is going to resign. That means that the president is going to have to gather all the parties that are in this governing coalition, ask them whether or not Renzi, if this is indeed the intention, if Renzi would be acceptable to be the new prime minister. If that's the case, you can essentially switch the head of the government, switch the premier, without actually having to call new elections. If that's not the case, if you need to call new elections, then we're into a further era, a, a further layer of turmoil. That we still don't know about. Uh, and we're still hopeful that we may hear from Renzi later tonight. He was supposed to speak after this meeting of his party. We didn't hear from him. So now the question is, will we hear from him and what will he be saying? Will he have legitimacy with the people? Guys? What has Enrico Letta been saying in the weeks after this? Because this power struggle is not new. It has been going on ever since December, since Renzi took control of the party. Uh, what, what he's been saying, uh, it, the, yesterday his comments were, uh, were very much about the, uh, Renzi needs to be careful, right? And he used this phrase, it's a bull in a china shop. Um, excuse me, my phone's ringing there. Um, so what we, have, what we have from Renzi is kind of a series of moves to oust Letta. What we had from Letta is, let's take this slowly, let's, let's walk very carefully. Uh, and Letta eventually, he didn't have his party behind him. Uh, he saw the writing on the wall and he needed to, uh, he needed to resign. Uh, and so he tendered his resignation. Hans, it was such a tumultuous period for Italian politics in the lead up to Enrico Letta taking over. Uh, do you think this is likely to usher in yet again a new era of political instability in Italy? Uh, I suspect that's a, that's, a safe, that's a safe bet. Look, the question is, so market's been pretty calm throughout the day on what's happening in Italian politics. The question is, is there a split between investors and voters? Investors might be relatively calm and almost, you know, thankful or pleased that there might be a slight change at the head of the government. The question really is, though, will voters have the same view? And if voters feel as though this were almost a coup d'etat uh, that lacks legitimacy, then what you're going to see is a government that's going to try to govern without any popular support. You know, this would be the third prime minister who is not democratically elected. Unclear how sustainable that is in the long term. All right, Hans, thank you so much. Hans Nichols, our international correspondent. And just to give you an indication of the market reaction, there's a story out that Italian borrowing costs have dropped to a record low at a sale of three-year debt today. So it seems like investors perhaps shrugging off some of the rising political tensions.